Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Buckeye Weekly Podcast. I am Tony Gerdeman, here as always with Tom Orr. Tom, how's it going? Tony, it has been way too long since we have done a good and proper bold prediction show. It feels like we're doing these either on the road, sort of off the cuff, uh, in the middle of all the other stuff blowing up in the college football world, or we're just not doing them because there's all the stuff blowing up in the college football world. But everything has sort of settled down for now, which means we're like six minutes away from finding out that Jim Harbaugh kidnapped the Lindbergh baby or something like that. But until that happens, Tony, let's do a bold prediction show. Tom, let's do a bold prediction show, and it has been a while. The last one I have written down on the Google Doc here is Minnesota. Now, we did two on the road. (laughs) Minnesota is this week. No, I'm sorry. Penn Penn State. I was like, boy, that is so long ago. I don't even remember that game. And the reason why is because it hasn't been played yet. The the Penn State game is the last one I have written down here because we did two on the road. Then we didn't get to last week's just because of we all live very, very busy lives and such, but we can now, Tom, I've got, I'm feeling pretty good about my eight, seven bold predictions. So I am, I think I have one most recently that we were keeping track of, but I will give you first go. All right. Well, let's see. How about this one, Tony? Something that Marvin Harrison Jr., he has done so many things in his career. But something that he has never done against a Power 5 team is have 150 yards receiving and two touchdown receptions in the same game. Tony, I think he does it this weekend against Michigan. Uh, no, 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 Minnesota. Now, you, now you've done it to me. Now you've done it to me. Now look, we're not looking past the Minnesota game. We've got to take it one game at a time. That's how it is in the bold predictions game. Against Minnesota, 150 yards receiving, two touchdowns. Marvin Harrison Jr. 150 yards receiving and two touchdowns. And, of course, (laughs) he had 149 last week. I I understand what you're saying. He had 162 against Penn State, but only scored once. Uh, This is, you're saying he's never done this before? Against a Power 5 team. He did it against Youngstown State earlier this year. He did it against Arkansas State last year. Yeah, I I mean, I, I have no ability to there's no precedent that i can go to ah, da, 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 and dispute this one so we will allow it that is below his average so this is why it's only a one point he would need to be like i don't at this point in time i don't even know what a three point marvin harrison game would look like it starts with four touchdowns though four touchdowns maybe an interception or two uh kicks a field goal of at least 34 yards yeah they or, and or, even then, I think we're, we'd be arguing for a while about whether it was a two-pointer or a three-pointer. It would have to be some precise 17 and 34-yard touchdowns in there, perhaps, as well. So Leads the Buckeyes in rebounding. <laughs> well, I would not put anything past him. So 150 yards receiving and two touchdowns. I'm good with that. Although he did have 150 yards plus of total offense last week, but that's not what we're talking about, Tom, so don't even try it. My first one. Ohio State will have at least one tackle for loss between Minnesota's 17 and 34-yard lines. So how many tackles for loss are we thinking they're going to have? Well, I mean, what what is the... I have not looked up Ohio State's average numbers of tackles for loss. I can get that for you here in a second. Just continue to talk and uh, muse, and I will tell you... Yeah, if, if... Because I think, you know, you, you figure Minnesota is going to be between the 17 and 34 yard lines. It, this is just on the Minnesota side of the field, yes, correct? For sure. Okay. So they're probably between those yard lines on, say there's 10 possessions. They're probably between those yard lines at some point on like seven or eight of those possessions, I would guess. Because you're sort of defaulting to starting at the 25 on most kickoffs. And you're going to, you know, you get one, you know, if you're starting behind there, you get one first down, you're there. Do you have the number of tackles for loss on average per game for the Ohio State defense? 
They've had 42 in seven Big Ten games. Okay, so six per game. It feels like you're, I mean, like six per game, like on average, one of those is going to probably be between the 17 and the 34. Can you give me some kind of a sweetener here? That uh, do, it's... You want, do you want to make it between the the twenty and the thirty four? I, I don't. I don't like going away from the seventeen with thirty four. But I understand. Well, I know. Yeah, a bit. yeah. And and I'm trying to figure out if it's uh, one point five or how, it's how... it's one one ta- you know one tackle for loss. But uh, I get to pick two people who cannot be the person who does the tackle oh. for loss. How about that? Because I don't. I really don't want to get away from the seventeen and the thirty four. Perfect. All right. So. It does not count if JT Tui Moloau mm-hmm. or Sonny Styles does it. I think those would but would have been the two I would have eliminated as well if I were you, not me. Um, fortunately, it'll be like Tyleek Williams or Cody Simon. I'll be fine. Don't worry. Yeah, I, I, th- I, I think you've yeah, fallen yeah. into my trap. I I have, uh, yeah, th- that feels like something that if we went back and looked, they've probably done that more often than not this year. But I, I'm just sort of guessing off the top of my head and trying to do some rather, you know, back of the envelope math on how often that probably happens. So, well, th- this is one of these things. This is what the off season's for, Tony. We what did what did you guys do during the off season? Well, we did a really elaborate study on tackles for loss between the seventeen and the thirty four yard line. That's I uh, can't wait. Uh, all right, so Minnesota is averaging six point four yards per attempt passing the football this year. That's not great. It is not tremendous. However, Ohio State holds them. One and a half yards per attempt below that average, 4.9 yards per attempt or lower for Minnesota throwing the football. That's that's interesting. 4.9 yards per attempt or lower. Do you know how many times Ohio State has done that to an opponent this year, Tom? I do not know. Six times. Well, <laughs> in that case, uh, how about 4.5 yards per attempt? Uh, four point five yards per attempt. They have done that one, two, three, four, five times. Okay, Tony. So let's just move on. Ohio State. Uh, Ohio State on average right now this season they are throwing for nine point two four yards per attempt. Minnesota throwing for six point four yards per attempt. Uh, so that is a difference of. I just used up all my math brain on earlier <laughs> trying to figure out your thing. Uh, let's say, uh, it is well. It's you know like. Less than three yards per attempt. It is uh, two point eight yards per attempt, give or take. Uh, Ohio State outgains Minnesota by at least four point five yards per attempt passing on Saturday. You know, my favorite part about that exact number is because on the season, Ohio State is averaging nine point two yards per pass attempt, Dang and yes. they are holding opponents to four point seven yards per pass attempt. <laughs> See. The problem is I didn't, I just looked at the offensive numbers here. So, um, all right. So how about, uh, how about Ohio State against Minnesota by at least five yards per pass attempt? How about that? That better? I mean, it's, it's a little better. I'm sure they've probably done that like five times, but we've got to move on with the show. We'll just go ahead and say at least five yards per attempt. I do. I do. I'm going to have to look at Michigan State to see what it was. So Michigan State, they allowed, they allowed the Spartans three and a half yards per pass attempt. And they and they had ten point four yards per pass attempt. So five point. If you give me six, no, we'll go five point nine. Five point nine. Okay, five point nine. That's fine. <laughs> Gee whiz. The, the 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 thing with this defense, Tom, this good Ohio State defense, is it's become frustrating to find something bold. To mm-hmm. you can't bundle the boldness anymore because the the defense skews everything. See, and the problem is I just looked at the offensive numbers. I did not look at the defensive numbers. So I'm like, oh, okay, this feels like an opportunity. And like, there, may, there may, be a re- may be a reason that it felt like an opportunity. So we said 5.9 yards per pass 5. attempt more? 9 yards per attempt more than Minnesota. Yes. All right. Okay. Now, Tom, college football has been around for 154 years. And Rutgers so- has been there for all of it. So much Rutgers. 
the the actual anniversary was 10 days ago, just an <laughs> FYI. Never once in those 154 years and 10 days has Sonny Styles had at least two impact plays in a game. And so I am saying uh, Sonny Styles has at least two impact plays in a game being tackle for loss, sack, pass uh, pass breakup, forced fumble, fumble recovery, that sort of thing. Two for Sonny Styles in this game. He's never had two impact plays in a game? That seems impossible. In One all these half. years, in all of these years of Sonny Styles playing football, going back to 1869, not once. That is, boy, I would never have guessed that in a million years. And friends, and just in case you haven't picked up the trends here, uh, anytime Tony says going back to 1869, he is always about to drop some nonsense on you. That is that is the that is the thing. However, he has never done it. Much like Marvin Harrison has never done the 150 and two, mm-hmm. Sonny Styles has never done it. So he, that is, uh, yes, I will I will allow that. Good. All right, Tony. Going back to 1869. Matt Jones, Matt Jones played 10 snaps at Ooh. center last week. I say he plays more than 10 snaps at center this weekend. He, I, I, did, I have not gone back and done a deep dive on number of snaps uh, that he had played at center game by game. But when we talked to him on Wednesday night, he did not have a real definitive like, oh, yeah, I played like 60 snaps at center. I played, you know, I played a ton at center. A couple of years ago. So I'm going to think that last weekend was the most snaps at center he's played in a game, at least in a while. So I'm going to say he plays even more at center this weekend than he did last weekend. This is out of the box thinking, Tom, and I appreciate you finally doing this for once. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I I have no problem with this one. And it, it's just going to be interesting to see if it does happen because it was interesting to see him there last week. So if he's there more this week i think that is that, that might be telling you something but how much more is going to be the real thing yes it, it feels like if he plays 11 snaps at center then that tells you one thing if he plays 40 snaps at center or 60 snaps at center that tells me this is probably not going to be a particularly bold pick to run back uh, the following week against michigan so yeah that's that's uh it just feels like they're keeping their options open there and I'm going to be so interested to see if and when that change happens because it feels like they're at least leaving the door open to having that change happen and then it's just a matter of does it and if it does when yeah they're not doing it for nothing so Mm -hmm. we'll see what happens there Tom my next one pointer is uh, I'm going back to something I've done a couple of times, but something that has not happened since October 22nd of 2022, which is Julian Fleming is going to score a touchdown. He is about the most due dude on this Ohio State offense in terms of scoring, because remember, remember, his first five games that he played last year, he scored six touchdowns, hasn't scored since. This dude is due for a touchdown, either through the air, on the ground, kickoff return onside kickoff return however it happens touchdown for julian fleming and it's only one point okay two points uh n- not not two points for this like in terms of oh. the number of points to it two two rebuttals responses number one calling him a doo dude you really got to be careful how you're saying that and how you're enunciating that okay that's point number one mm-hmm. number two this is an exceptional exceptional answer because this is senior day brian hartline said you're expecting, you know, if you're if you're eligible to walk, you walk and you can always come back the following year like Josh Proctor did. But yeah, on a senior day, you know, it feels like a, this might be a get this guy a touchdown kind of thing. I think, you know, Xavier Johnson scoring a touchdown is, you know, a, probably a possibility as well for similar reasons but yeah i like i like this one a lot that is a that is a great pick and because it hasn't happened for over a year like there's there's no question about the uh the boldness of the prediction so yes i will uh i will allow that one all right all right my next one i think we're gonna see a decent amount of rotation on the defense if the game gets out of hand i think you're gonna see a lot of the younger guys playing extended minutes in the uh, second half. 
And that is why, Tony, I think Kai Stokes is going to do something he has literally never done in the history of college football. Record a tackle in the 2023 Ohio State football season. Really? That he's no no tackles last year as a true freshman. He, no, it, no, just this oh, year. He he recorded. He he played last year. He just has not had a tackle all year long. But Tony, he's going to do it on Saturday. In the history of college football, he has not recorded a single tackle this year. Tom, yes. that is some word salad that is beneath you. And frankly, I am ashamed that you are using my own tactics against me. I think over the years, if we've learned anything on this show, there's nothing that is beneath me. It is, I, I we hit the sub-basement, we keep digging. That is the bold predictions guarantee. Tom, you don't win, you don't win friends with word salad, but I will <laughs> allow this when Kai Stokes records a tackle in uh, the first three quarters. Is, what, is that what you said? Uh, no, I, I did not, in fact, say the first three quarters. I made no, no time reference whatsoever other than on Saturday. Okay. Okay. I I can allow that. That's that's a pretty good one. I I can see that one happening, and uh, so we'll we'll move we'll move on, Tom. I'm I, I'm torn on whether this should be uh, whether I should move this to a two and move a two to a one and change some things around because this feels like a two. So I'm gonna I'm gonna hold off and go with this one one pointer, Tom. Something I've done once this year and completely failed on. But I have faith in Jaden Ballard. I think he is getting close to breaking one. So I'm saying a season-long punt return of at least 19 yards for the Ohio State Buckeyes. Tom, you have been a longtime critic of the Ohio, Ohio State special teams this year. Last year, you're a huge fan of the Ohio State special teams. Couldn't say enough good things. I was a little bit like, I don't know that you should be so uh, heaping of the praise on this special teams but now this year you've come back around and you're you're drinking the haterade i think we're going to see a season long punt return of at least 19 yards for somebody from the ohio state program this went from jaden ballard to somebody from the ohio state program very quickly didn't it that was that was interesting how that that changed um I, yeah i mean if you're picking them to do a season long i suppose i have to uh, i suppose i have to allow it um, I'm trying to think if it would be more canonical for it to be between 17 and 34 yards or just over 19, because you, you, you know, I, frankly, it, I think it makes it more likely to hit if it is between 17 to 34 yards, but do, do you, do you disagree? You're asking me if I think that it's, he's more likely to have a 17 yarder than a 19 yarder. I don't know that there's any difference there, but also that only, only between like 17 and 34. Whereas I just need a 19. I don't need the 17. I don't need the 34 because there's a chance if he goes 19, he's going 20, 21, 35, 38, 39. Well, so yeah. Okay. I, I, would, fine. I would hate to miss out on getting this because he took it to the house is I guess what I'm saying. And yeah, my, that, that, my bold prediction encompasses yours except for those two yards, and I'm willing to just leave those two yards to you. If you want to take a punt return between 17 and 18 yards, Tom, I will give you that for three points. I was going to – I was I'm offering you 17 to 34, just to be clear. I'm offering you 17 to 34, yeah. not 17 to – okay, that's I'm fine. I'm taking no, 19 I, to 99. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, Ohio State does something really exciting in a positive way on special teams. Sure. Uh, I will allow this. Would you like more than one point, Tony? Are you sure? You sure this isn't your three? <laughs> and hangs on to the football at the end of it is the uh, is what makes it a three pointer. Yeah, well, no, it's fine. That's that's fine. I, Nineteen yards or longer, I will allow that. I, it, I, 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 I'm going to really, really, really find it amusing if he has a seventeen or eighteen yard punt return. Mm -hmm. Like I'm really mm -hmm. going to find that amusing. But that's fine. That I, I am leaving it up to you, and you have made your choice, and that is fine. Nineteen right. yards or longer for a punt return. All right. By Mitch Rossi. Got it. Okay. All right. So I'm in the same boat as you in terms of who, which one of these is my one pointer and which one of these is my hmm. two pointer. And I will, I'm going to put this one out there. And then if you hear my two pointer and you're like, no, I disagree. 
we'll we'll uh we'll take it back well we can flip flop them uh three ohio state quarterbacks throw for at least 17 yards yeah um i'm good with that um i was thinking about something similar and one of the ones that i was thinking about that i did not go with was devin brown accounting for two touchdowns or Lincoln Keenholz accounting for one, you know, <laughs> just not knowing what's exactly what's going to happen. But I feel like you're going to see some guys in there. So I like this one because I do. We saw them throw the ball with Lincoln Keenholz and they'll want to continue to do that. They're definitely going to do it with Devin Brown if he can go. So I this is bold. So I will mm-hmm. I have no problems with this one, Tom. And it's 17 yards. So. It is 17. It is 17 yards. And. You know, I think there is a non-zero trans chance that we see Tristan Jebbia at some mm-hmm. point on Saturday. He has yet to play in a game, as far as I'm aware, this year. And with it being Senior Day, you might try and get him in at the end. You know, at the end of the game, I don't. If he's in, it feels like he's in a. Uh, you know, he's going to match Quinn Ewers' career stat line and play. You know, three plays and hand the ball off three times. But you know, it, it's you know, you may see him. But yeah, I didn't want to put specific names on it because if you don't have Devin Brown, then maybe you do have Tristan Jebbia throw on the ball at some point and, and Lincoln Keenholz is in there earlier or whatever. So yeah, but uh, I thought that was I thought that was a reasonable one. And I think there's a non-zero chance you see four Ohio State quarterbacks on Saturday if things kind of play out as they could and everyone's good to go. Yeah, and they get that fast start that they're looking for. Tom, my final one-pointer College football has been around for 154 years. I don't think I need to tell you that. Plus 10 days, nearly 155 years now. And I'm going to go back to the well that I went to earlier. And this was not my intention because this is one of my two pointers, but I'm going to move it up to one. And Xavier Johnson scores a touchdown. He has not done it this year. He's been involved, but he scored three last year. Has not scored Mm one. Hasn't scored at all this year, which kind of surprised me. So I was like, well. Let's go ahead and go to that one. And then you mentioned the senior day thing. I'm like, oh, that's even that makes this even better. So I moved it down to one from a two. Um, because he is a he's not a starter like Julian Fleming. Mm-hmm. He plays half the snaps as anybody else. So that makes makes his scoring chances twice as rare. Tom, that's how math works. I know you're you'd like to think of yourself as the math person on the show, but I can also add and subtract at times and divide and multiply also tom so i'm saying xavier johnson touchdown the last time he scored obviously the georgia game last year scored against indiana on a like a 72 yard run against indiana last year and of course the notre dame game a year ago touchdown for xavier johnson one pointer what say you uh i i say i can't believe xavier johnson hasn't scored a touchdown this year but apparently that is accurate uh xavier johnson has had more touches this year than uh, Julian Fleming, Julian Fleming with 21 receptions, Xavier Johnson with 21 rushes and eight receptions. So, yeah, this this in a lot of ways maybe feels even more likely to hit than the Julian Fleming one, especially because it is definitely his senior day. Uh, you know, there's not a chance mm. unless unless they come up with another way to, you know, extend a college career. I think six years may be doing it for him. So, yeah, the, this one, this is a good one. I'm a little annoyed that I brought this up, brought up the senior day thing earlier, but you, you know, had this on your list. I would mm. not have probably let this go as a two pointer, but as a one pointer, I think that's a, that's a reasonable, uh, reasonable one. Yeah. And as we were talking about it, I want to, if I was going to make it a two pointer, I would have thrown a 17 yards on there, but mm-hmm. um, I think, I think we're good here. We, we can move on now, Tom. Yes. All right. Two pointer. Uh, one Ohio state defensive back has both a tackle for loss and an interception in the game. I like this one. Uh, yeah, I, I'm not going to even argue on this one because that's the interception is rare, and that goes along with my next one. Um, so when you double that up, that's that's worth definitely more than one point. So one DB, and it could be any DB, has a tackle for loss mm-hmm. and an interception. Now I'm just trying to think. Sonny Styles is going to be in that in that discussion the entire yes, time as, as a, a defensive as a safety, back. Yes, we're not talking yeah. about him as a Sam. So I like this one. If it happens, great for Ohio State. Bad for me, but I if I lose five to two or if I win five to two, that yeah, I'll be okay with that. That's fine. 
Yeah, I, I was trying to think, is there anyone that I can kind of loophole in here? Mm. Like, well, I mean, when you think about how many interceptions JT Tuimolo had against uh, Penn State last mm -hmm. year, isn't he really more of a defensive back than a lot of the guys on the team? But I don't I don't think there's any kind of gray area we can play in here, sadly. So I, I, I thought that was a good one. That was I don't think we've done one like that before. That was I'm trying to think of different different things. Mm -hmm. We're not just doing the same thing. So I'm not getting the same ones wrong every week. I want to get new ones wrong. Keep things fresh. Well, you know who was tied for third on passes broken up for Ohio State? Tyleek Williams. Yeah. Okay, if Tyleek Williams has, does it, then that counts too. I will I, mean, I will allow. This is Williams. just this is or Tyleek we're, Williams. We're going to call we're going to call it the Haskell Garrett rule. Yes. All right, now my my two pointer goes right along with that. I'm going to narrow it down a little bit. And it's just a cornerback interception, which has only happened twice this year and has not happened since Western Kentucky. Uh, Jermaine Matthews had an interception. The week before that, Denzel Burke had an interception. Jordan Hancock's interception came while he's playing nickel. So I'm just saying outside corner interception. Okay. So just the outside corner. So yes. we're talking, you know, unless something really surprising happens, Jordan Hancock won't count. Sonny Styles won't count. Josh Proctor won't count. Okay, just so we're sort of defining our terms here. So we're really looking at basically Denzel Burke, Davis Nigbenosen, Jermaine Matthews. Calvin Simpson uh, Hunt. Calvin Simpson Hunt, Jair Brown, yep. Ryan Turner. Yeah, assuming they were playing outside. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Uh, that's. Yeah, I think we've defined that narrowly enough. Now, to, uh, that feels. I'm trying to decide if this feels like a two-pointer to me, but I don't know that I... Th what was your last one-pointer that you thought you were going to... Oh, it was it was Xavier Johnson. No, yeah. that's not it. You know. yeah. eh. I'm going to, in the spirit of togetherness and the holidays and the fact that we're 27 minutes in, I'm not going to fight you on this one, but I don't love it as a two-pointer, but it's okay. All right. Year three. All right. Uh, as far as I can tell, this has not happened going back until the – the only time I can remember this happening uh, was the Sugar Bowl against Clemson several years ago. I checked there, you know, Mitch, no combination of Mitch Rossi, G. Scott, Cade Stover has had this happen in the past couple of years. Two tight ends score touchdowns for Ohio State. I do not like that one, but it is one of those rare things. So I'm going to allow it and just speak until I get over the fact that I hate this and I'm going to go along with it. If you'd like to flip, if you'd like to flip point values on the two versus the three or any of that, I'm open to any of that. If you feel that this is less, you know, more likely to happen than the other one, that's, that's totally fine. Yeah, honestly, I, I I would like to flip your two and your three, and and removing Tyleek Williams. No, <laughs> uh, we can keep him. And in fact, if you want to add Taiwan Malone, I will allow it. Add Taiwan Malone to the three pointers as well. Yes. Okay, so so, uh, one defensive back or Ty Tyleek Williams or Taiwan Malone. Okay, sure. All right, and uh, so two tight ends. So this is the. The last time this happened was Jeremy Record and Luke Farrell. Is that correct? That was, I went back, I went back this year and last year and couldn't find anything. And then the last time just off the top of my head is I know they had, uh, Record had two touchdowns mm -hmm. and Farrell had one or vice versa in the Clemson uh, Sugar Bowl. Yeah. Um, it's just, it's, it's interesting to me that when I do one pointers, they've never happened before in the history of college football. When you do two pointers, it's like, well, it happened three years ago, but you know, I'm talking about Sonny Styles doing something that has never happened ever for him in 156 years or whatever it is. And you're talking about something that was three years ago. That's fine. I'm not complaining. I'm just letting the people know. Um, Tom, my three pointer, as I don't give you a chance to rebut Ohio state, I'm going to pick them to do something they have not done since 2017 which is something that, Tom, we say you never pick somebody to do. You never pick a team to do. 
Ohio State shuts out a Big Ten opponent for the first time since they shut out Rutgers in 2017. And it's going to be the first time they shut out a Big Ten opponent at home since they shut out Rutgers in 2016. Mm. So not only are you predicting them to shut out a Big Ten opponent, but you're predicting them to do it at home, which makes it That's... even more rare. Wow, that is incredible. When is the last time they've shut out a Big Ten West opponent at home? I mean, boy, are we sure boy. three points is enough for this one? I, I yeah, I, that's fine. I'm I'm fine with that just because of the general foolishness of predicting mm -hmm. someone to. Um, man, it's going to be so funny when special teams blows this for you. Oh man, is that going to be funny? Yeah, I, I you know I think you know I just I was just pulling up the college football nerds model to see what their score projection was, and they've got Minnesota scoring twelve points. So this is mm -hmm. not you know this is not like uh, you know the. Iowa Hawkeyes against the 85 Bears, where it's like they're projected to score minus seven. Like, it, it, this is, it's fine. I, okay. I, I will, I will allow that. All right. And your freebie? My freebie for you. Hmm. Ohio State gains at least one first down in the first half of Saturday's game. Hmm. This sounds good, but can Tony, I the... never in the history of college football, going back to 1869, has Ohio State gained a first down against Minnesota this upcoming Saturday, but I predict that it will happen. Give me the first drive of the third quarter, too. Okay, but it doesn't count if it's from the 17 or 34-yard line. Okay, now th now this is getting more complicated in the Big 12's tiebreaker. So let's just go with the first down in the first half, and then All right. nip it there. We'll we'll do that now. Tom, uh, let me see what what free point prediction, bold or not, can I give to you? I am going to say that Ohio State will pick up at least one third down on Saturday via pass, rush, or penalty. Yeah, I and this is a good one because if it doesn't happen, uh, Columbus will burn to the ground and uh, so it won't really be an issue. So, yeah, I, I guess I feel like mine is more likely to happen than yours, but yeah, that's okay. That's fine. That's... It's the holidays, and not everyone is in the same level of giving spirit. That's fine. But it's fine. I, I will. Uh, I think that is a permissible one. I, I, I think Ohio State can they can it be a third or fourth down? Because if do they don't convert, a, if they don't convert on third, hmm. feels like if they pick it up on fourth, that should still get you there. All right, that that's fine. And also, it doesn't matter because the 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 heart of that prediction is that they will never face a third down. They're just yes. going to be first and second. So. Yeah, if you want a fourth down, go ahead and take it. I'm just looking through here um, year, annual, yearly, to see like the the low number of third downs that they picked up. Um, they were 2 of 12 against Indiana this year in the season opener, which is woof. Um, you know, never Got to gotta tell you, having been there, it felt worse than that. <laughs> so I'm going to assume this has not happened any time recently. And I, Ooh, one for five against Miami of Ohio in 2019. Cutting it close there, Tommy. Oh boy. Now I'm now I'm gonna go back to the uh, I, I want to go back to the 2016 uh Clemson end of season game because boy three of fourteen. I, three of fourteen. Okay. Well then yeah, if they if they did it that game, it feels like they're gonna do it. You know, this is this is not, you know, Minnesota's not great, but Minnesota's also not. 2019 Miami. So you want you want another sign that the 2015 season was cursed. They were two of fourteen against Indiana on third downs Ooh. that year. I have no recollection of the 2015 Ohio State Indiana game. Like you could tell me, you know, like one of those things where like if you can speak intelligently about this without repeating yourself for 30 seconds, you win a new car or something. No chance. I assume the game was at Indiana because it was at yes. home in 2014. Mm -hmm. Well, oh. beyond that, was that the was that the one where they ran for like twelve million yards? Was it like that? That was a fifty four so. fifty two or something mm -hmm. like that. Was that well? That the one? score was thirty four twenty seven. So that oh, wouldn't have been no. no. That, that was uh, twenty 
14, where it was like 60, 70, 80 yards by LA or whatever. But um, 2013, the Michigan State Big Ten Championship game, they were one of 10. That is uh, the only other time they've been down to just one third down conversion. But I think I think we've covered it, Tom. I want to thank everybody for joining us. And, of course, we'll invite you to check us out at BuckeyeHuddle.com. Become a member if you have not yet. It's a great holiday gift to yourself or someone that you love, especially yourself. Uh, just reward yourself or reward those around you. And, of course, if you're watching this on YouTube, go ahead and hit the like. Go ahead and subscribe to this channel if you have not yet. We would appreciate that. And with all of that said, I want to thank you all for tuning in. And we will talk to you all later.